Okay, so this is a recording where I'm going to go through the GCSE project, focusing today on the specification, thinking about how we kind of tie it up a little bit, make it really clear about what we're trying to design. So, so far, what you've produced with me is a mind map of possible design projects, and you've looked at those three briefs, you've come up with a context that you're going to follow, you've thought of some possible ideas, and the next job that you need to do is to start thinking about um, how you meet the requirements of a particular user. So that's where you do your target market, your intended user or group of users, and you look at their particular requirements and what they need to um, help them be successful and, and work with your products effectively. Um, if your product does not fit the requirements of your target market, it is not an effective product. So getting this right is really, really important. And your specification that we're going to do later on needs this target market done. So if you haven't done this yet, you need to go back to it and have another little look at it. Okay, there's always next steps, remember, that's a key point. Here's an example of the uh, user interview and investigation of needs and wants that I've done on a previous project. Uh, you can see how it summarizes, it brings all that information together onto one slide. Do a little bit of that in a minute. Um, writing the questionnaire, getting the answers uh, from the target market leads us into the next steps. Without finding out from your target market what your product has to do and what their requirements are, you can't write this specification. I can't emphasize that enough. You need your target market done. So find them, talk to them, get their responses. And until you've done that, you can't move on to the next bit. But your specification is your next activity. Um, what I did on my project is I've asked the person in the target market to give me a really clear picture of the working area um, because this is all about designing for a particular person working in that environment. So that environment's important. So wherever you're working, whoever your intended user is, if, you, if it's a drawer for an old lady to access her medication, if it is a piece of play equipment and storage for a child's nursery, you need to be thinking about the place where your product is used. I think it's really important to have a photograph. Now, I've done a really big writing here. I'm always telling my students off for writing really big. I've kept it here because I was doing it quite quickly. This page will fill up over the course of this project. As more information comes in, this page will fill up with other content that um, talks about the size of the, the product or um, testing out different bits of it, maybe looking from a different angle, maybe looking, if I was talking about designing for somebody's house, I would be looking at the architectural style and the interior design style in their house. So use your photographs on your phones, get people to email you a picture, and then give yourself some key points. This is quite, quite basic at the moment. Um, it will fill up, but it does tell me quite a lot about what my product has to do. Then I look at existing products. Now these things are interchangeable, aren't they? Survey with your intended user, looking at your existing products, looking at the place where it's used. You can do those. Design isn't one step, one step, one step. It's very much about looking at things and coming back to them and revisiting. So this is another one. Thinking about how the product is used, thinking about existing products, and then you start to go, well, could that one work in that position? I don't know. You look at it yourself. Okay, so now we're onto the design specification. Here is one from a previous one. I'll leave that in the video if you want, just, just for reference. I'm going to go on to how we designed this one, though. Okay, so this is one from a previous project. Um, Access FM, we often talk about Access FM. There's lots of different ways of doing things. This is like a, a, a way of remembering things that you ought to include. Aesthetics, environment, cost, size, function, materials, customer safety, etc. Um, a, C, I think I'm C, E, S, S, F, M. Yeah, Access FM is there. Um, there are some prompts for you. You don't have to use Access, F Access FM and you can come up with more for yourself by all means. But this is, if you're stuck, look on this video for these key pointers for you. So here's the design specification, design brief and specification. The word specification comes from the point that you have to be specific. You have to be really, really clear about what you are intending to do. If you go back to those Access FM, I think there's nine, eight or nine points there. Um, on this table, you've got room for that. You can always come up with more. What you don't want to do is have not enough points. The specification is your checklist for success. Okay, If you don't meet your specification, your product has not achieved what it needs to do. So by getting this specification right at this point, it gives you really, really clear guidance as you move through the project about what your next steps have to be, because you can kind of tick them off. Is it environmentally friendly? Yeah, tick it off. Is it safe, no finger traps? Yeah, tick it off. 
But when we're doing it at this stage in the project, we don't have all the information. We're, we're still researching, we're still finding out. So this specification can be adapted, but you need some sort of guidance about how to start, don't you? So here, here's how I do it. I have a specification statement, I justify it using reasons or notes, and then I think about a possible test for it, okay? So I'm just gonna run through a couple of these with you. Um, Let's go back. It will be simple and model looking. That is so not specific. It is really poor um, at the moment. But I'll come back. I'll do some investigation of architects or designers. And I'll say it will be after uh, Richard Rogers or it will look like uh, Michael Graves. Or, or you know, I'll, I'll think about it really, really clearly. Or I'll say it must look like falling water as a house. I'll be clear later. But for now, because I haven't done that research, that I'll have to do. It would be less than £30 in materials to manufacture the prototype. You'd hope so. Um, certainly, you, we've took, I'm talking about the prototype being the product at the moment. We won't go in GCSE. We won't go into mass production or batch production. So that basically means that our end result will be the prototype. So I'm saying £30 maximum. That's quite a lot of money, actually. Uh, it must be suitable for adult use in a typical home. Look, a toddler, a baby, is going to knock things over. So you don't design furniture for a baby, unless you're working in a nursery setting, and then maybe you do. So I'm talking about adult use, normal use, okay? You have to build in a little bit of capacity for things not working out, but basically that's it. Then you give your reasons or notes for each single point. Ooh, I'm jumping backwards and forwards, got my hand on my tablet there. Um, for every point, you have to give a reason. If you don't justify it, you don't get the marks, okay? Now I'm not gonna read through my specification for you, um, because you can read that on the video. So basically, all the way through, I'm looking back to Access FM. So I'm looking at aesthetics, cost, customer, environment, size, safety, function, materials, and then a couple of other points that go with it. And then each one of those gets a justification. Here's the interesting bit, a possible test. Now you get marks at the end of your project for evaluation and ongoing testing. So you might as well think about how am I gonna test that? How am I gonna check as I go along? So you start writing things that you're gonna to do to look at to see if it's worked out, okay? I'm gonna to compare to see if it's modern looking by comparing with existing products. I'm gonna look at whether or not I've hit my 30 pound budget. Guess what, I'm gonna calculate the costs. So this isn't, this isn't really, really difficult. You just got to kind of follow the process. Uh, it'll be made from environmentally friendly materials such as metal or timber based products. But what about if you do research and you go, actually, do you know what? That particular polymer or that particular ceramic is better. I'll use that instead. As long as you justify it, that's, that's perfectly okay at the moment. Uh, it'll be the height of a standard armchair and have an A3 size top. I'm gonna do model testing for that. Okay, so look, one, two, that's four of those. I just, I'm gonna test my model. You can see how important testing is all the way through your project. So the key bit for you, use Access FM, write your criteria, try and be specific where you can, give reasons for it, making sure you're giving reasons, and if you haven't, can't think of a reason, then maybe it shouldn't be a specification point, and then come up with your tests. Now I use my specification to come up with a design brief. I am going to. Now, in industry, you would be given a design brief, design and make me A, but you're coming up with your own. So the best place to get to that is from your specification. So once you've written your specification, you take your key points and you, you put that into a statement that you will follow, okay? And as always, next steps, next steps. What am I gonna do next? Sorry, things are popping up. I've got a drawing tablet in front of me, I keep knocking it. Um, what are you gonna do now? What are you gonna do as a result of doing your research into your target market and writing your specification? So. I give myself four or five points, or six, is that six? Five. Um, quick designs to produce a range of possible ideas, some methods of expanding products so it folds out or it stretches out. Um, looking at working from home more generally, maybe there are some companies that do that really well already. Um, I'll keep checking with my target market or intended user, and I'll start to think about materials. None of that is really, really tricky to do. You've just got to do it, and it's quite a big process to do. But design is challenging, design is, is hard. Um, so it's, it's a proper job and this is how we do a proper job. Um, so that's writing a design brief and specification. And remember, your specification has to be as specific as you can make it. Some of those are very general at the moment, so don't say, well, that one looks all right. 
They're a bit general at the minute because I haven't finished researching. I will make them more specific as I go. All right. Always give yourself some next steps and always be clear about the reasons why you've got a specification point on there. Okay. Take some time over the specification. This has taken me, again, it's taken me an hour to do this at least, if not more. All right. So um, take your